Well, 30 years ago, Dr. James Dobson, a psychologist, a man of God, made this prediction around 1990. He said that if men, if fathers, if men in general, and fathers in particular, do not place their wives and their children and their families as their highest priority, if men do not do this, he said about 30 years ago, Western civilization as we know it will cease to exist in the next 50 years. So Dr. Dobson made this prediction that if dads, if men do not hold their wife, their families, their children in the highest of priority, then Western civilization as we know it will end in 50 years. He made that prediction, hear this, 30 years ago. And look where we are today. And many are fearful that we are about 20 years away, therefore, from Western civilization as we know it, collapsing like civilizations of yesteryear. Many fear our nation as we know it, with its freedoms and its liberties and its opportunities, will one day soon vanish if things do not change today. This is why parenting and family and being a dad, hear this, is more important now than ever before in the history of our nation. Having children, therefore, is one thing. Parenting our children brings us to a whole new level. You see, the importance of parenting is crucial today. The importance of parenting is a responsibility, a role, a privilege that goes on. Parenting, ladies and gentlemen, is essential to our nation's civilization. Parenting, involved parenting, does more for a child than any other relationship they'll ever have. We have great teachers, and we have you know, great counselors, and we have you know, great pastors, and we have lots of great people that speak into the lives of your children. But none of these great professions can ever take the place of good parenting. Parenting is called to instill faith and hope and love into the life of a child. Hear this. Parenting is called to instill this joy, this responsibility. And for most children, a child's faith is molded by the parent. For most children... A child's faith is shaped by the parent. A child's hope, a child's assurance is often demonstrated by the parent. A child's love and their understanding of love is often shown and seen and demonstrated by the parent. You see, a child's first impression of dads, of moms, of men and of women comes from their parents. A child's first impression about what love is and what love's not is demonstrated by their parent. A child's faith, hope, and love, therefore, hear this, is first learned by their mom and by their dad. These are ingredients that bring hope and healing and lifelong success into the lives of your children. Hear this. Parents are called to provide stability and safety and structure. These are the ingredients needed in every home. Every child longs for these three things in their home. They want to feel safe. They want to feel as they have some stability. They want to know that tomorrow is going to look like yesterday. They want to know their safety, their stability. They want to have some structure in their home. They want to know that these are their things, and this is where they live, and this is where they sleep, and this is where they eat, and this is where they play. They want that. They need stability and safety and structure. These are the ingredients every child needs in their home. Thirdly, a parent is called to provide traditions. A parent is also called to declare who their children are, giving them identity, and also teaching them to respect. These are the ingredients every family needs to succeed in life. And moms and dads, that responsibility falls on you and me. So here are two major principles we must recognize. Two major principles every parent must understand. That is, number one, good parenting must be intentional. Good parenting must be intentional. In other words, you cannot put parenting on automatic pilot. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hear this. Think of a coach in a football team. Suppose, just for example, we'll use this example. Suppose tomorrow Coach O says, okay, guys, you know, I know we won the national championship last year. I got coach of the year. We had a Heisman Trophy winner. But you know what? This year, here's what we're going to do. You guys just go out there and, you know, fool around on the football field, toss it around a little bit. I'm going to go over here and have some Cane's chicken. <laughs> you guys just play ball, do your thing, you know, kind of toss it around a little bit, see how that goes, and we'll show up and play our first game in a couple months. 
How about we do that? We all know one thing. We would have a losing season. There would be no 15-0. and 0. There would be no coach of the year. There would be no Heisman Trophy winner. If a coach says to his players, you guys just kind of do your thing. I'm going to hang out over here and do my thing. And here's the point. Parents, we're called to be coaches to our kids. The Word of God says to coach your children or to train your children in the way they should go. In other words, we're called to get involved and to get invested and to be a part of their lives. We cannot put parenting, here's the point, on automatic pilot. We must be involved. We must be invested. We must be interested. We must be intentional in our parenting. Second of all, good parenting requires a vision. Simply meaning this, where do you want your children to be in 10 years? Where do you want them to be in 20 years? Where do you want them to be in 30 years? Many, many times when I am doing a mediation or a parenting coordination and this parent's hating this parent, this parent's hating this parent, I'll say, listen, guys, here's what you got to understand. I'm not talking about, and I'm not focusing on right here, right now, but if you guys don't get it together, I fear for where your kids are going to be in 30 years. So it's not just about right here, right now. We're called to have a vision as to where we want our kids to be in five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now. And it all begins right here, right now. So what are you doing to help them to reach their dreams? What kind of foundation are you creating? What are you doing and teaching them today that's going to bless them tomorrow? What are you demonstrating today? Hear this that is going to bring hope into their lives tomorrow. What kind of relationship, Dad, are you establishing today so that you can have a relationship tomorrow? Now, again, it must be noted, a little sidebar here, that we all have friends and family where perhaps, you know, your best friend or somebody you know uh, is a great person today. And let's just put it this way. Their parents were not the most responsible people, but they grew up and they have made something of their lives, and we thank God for them. And we also know the opposite. You have some great friends who are great people. Maybe they were great parents, but their kids just didn't turn out the way they had hoped. We'll just kind of leave it at that. But I would argue these are the exceptions. This is not the norm. In other words, please keep this in mind. Beware that you do not make the exception the norm. Be mindful, here's the point, of the insight needed for healthy parenting. Well, Mark, what do you mean by that? I mean this. There are at least 10 principles that we need to understand and apply as parents in general and as dads in particular. Things that we need to understand that's going to create faith and hope and love in the lives of your children. Things that we need to understand that's going to create stability and structure and safety in the lives of your children. Things that we need to understand that's going to give and create traditions and create, create identity and create respect in the hearts of your children. These 10 principles, I will argue, are needed for every dad, every mom, every business owner. You can use these principles and apply them in a number of ways. So if you're kind of tuning out, please tune back in. You may need to hear this. Number one, dads, hear this. Have a passion for your family. Have a passion for your wife. Have a passion for your marriage. Have a passion, dads, for your children. Recognize the greatest thing you can do is to bring passion for your kids and for your spouse and for your family into the home. Well, Mark, what do you mean by that? What I mean is this. When you have a passion for whatever it is you're doing, your business, when you have a passion for, again, your hobby, when you have a passion for uh, your spiritual life, whatever it may be, you give it your all. And people recognize and see you are all in. Your heart is in this. Ever meet someone who's lost their passion? Maybe that entertainer, that singer, and they go on stage and there's nothing. There's no passion. Or maybe that physician who no longer wants to treat his patients or her patients and they've lost that passion. Or, or maybe there is that, that pastor or that teacher that used to love to teach, but they've lost their passion. The point simply is this. You can tell it. And when you start talking about them, here's what you say. You say things like, well, their heart's not in it any longer. Their heart's not in it. They've lost their passion. The point is this. Dads, we're called to have a passion 
for our families. And when we have a passion for our families, it is seen, it is felt, it is heard, it's understood. Dads, we're called to have a passion for our spouse. No, I've said this time and time again, the greatest thing you can do, dads, for your children is to love their mother. Now, if you're in a difficult situation or your situation is a little different, you can be civil, you can be gracious, but be aware of this, dads. Be aware as you bring this passion into your home. Be also aware of your own issues, your own temper, your own pride, your own grudges, your own aggression. Be aware how sometimes these things can get in the way of bringing that passion You see, these areas of life, if they're not managed, if your temper's not managed, if your pride's not managed, if your grudges aren't managed, if your aggression is not managed, these areas of life, hear this, will hurt or even destroy the relationships that you treasure. So dads, again, be aware of who you are. Bring that passion into the family. Bring that passion into your marriage. Bring that passion into the lives of your children. Number two, second principle, discover your child's interests and strengths and joy. Discover what your child enjoys. Discover their strength. Discover what they enjoy. Not what you enjoy, but what they like. Not what you enjoy. I mean, you have your deal and your hobby. That's great. But discover what your child enjoys. My my point simply is this. Be careful that you're not pushing basketball onto a child who loves football. Or be careful you don't push football on a child who loves basketball. Be careful that if your daughter loves softball more than cheering. Be careful that, again, if your child loves music more than mechanics. Be careful, note and understand what your child wants and needs. And then, thirdly, get involved with that. In other words, get into their world. Support, show up, enjoy, and coach. Support what they want. Support what they enjoy. Coach what they're interested in. Be there for them. In other words, whatever it is they're enjoying, be a part of their world. Next, teach them the value of work. Teach your children the value of work. Mom and dad, hear this. It's okay for your child to work for what they get. It's okay for your child to start working for the things they're wanting. Here's the point. When you're working, when you learn how to work, hear this. Work produces confidence. Work prepares them for reality. Work creates a respect for authority. Here's what I know. If this is all you do, Dad, a little bit more, a little bit more, Uh, a little bit more. Oh, you want some more? Oh, a little bit more, Uh, a little bit more. Your child will never understand as my dad used to say, the value of a dollar. They'll never understand reality. They'll never understand how work produces confidence. They'll never understand how to set goals and work for the things they're wanting. Work, hear this. When you're working for something, it takes away the entitlement attitude. And I will argue this. It is the entitlement attitude that is ruining an entire generation in this country. And if we as dads do not train our children how to work, they will grow up without the confidence, without the responsibility, without the respect for authority that is so needed to do well in life. Next, number five, be flexible. Dads, be flexible. Be willing to bend. Dads, hear this. Life and circumstances don't always fit your agenda. Life and circumstances, dads, don't always fit your agenda. Be able to reset your boundaries. Be able to rethink your decision. Sometimes dads hear this, you need to hit the pause button and give some things some thought and some consideration. Uh, I don't know about you, but my dad was a great guy on many levels, but so many times before I'd even get the sentence out, he'd say no. I'd say, hey dad, do you mind if, no. Well dad, can I have somebody come up? No. Well dad, I was thinking about borrowing that, no. Dad, can I, no. Well, would you at least let me get the sentence out of my mouth? <laughs> and do we not do that sometimes? We say no before we even hear the question. There's just something about us that's wired that way. Here's the point. Here's something I learned a long, long time ago, and it worked for the most part. Dads, moms, learn how to say yes unless you have a solid reason to say no. I'll say that again. Learn how to say yes unless you have a solid reason to say no. And what you'll discover is this. You'll discover that your kids are nearly as sneaky 
Amen? Anybody have any sneaky kids in here? Just, just ask. What do we do? When our mom and dad, we know they're going to say yes, we'll invite them, we'll include them, we'll ask, we'll, we'll get involved. The point simply is this. Let them know. I'll tell you yes, as long as you're asking me, unless I have a good, solid reason to say no. My point is this. That's how we learn how to be flexible, dads. That's how we learn to bring our children into our world and learning how to also get into theirs. Next, number six, dads, be real. Hear dads this. Dads, if you tuned out, you got to hear this. Dads, be real. And what do you mean, Mark, be real? Dads, hear this. You're going to mess up. I'm going to mess up. My dad messed up. There are times when your dad messed up. Welcome to the human race. Welcome to being a dad. Dads, you're going to make mistakes. I've made my share. My dad made his share. You've made your share. Dads, you're going to say things, hear this, that hurt those you love. Dads, you're going to do things you regret. But dads, here's the point. Be willing to own it. Don't deny it. Don't pretend you didn't do it. Don't pretend that it was somebody else's fault. Don't blame your wife, their mother. Don't blame this one. Don't blame your own parenting. Don't blame your traditions. Don't blame whatever. Just own it. And seek the forgiveness, first of all, from your God and Savior. Seek his forgiveness. And then seek the forgiveness, perhaps, from your children and maybe even from your spouse. It's okay to say, look, I messed up. I'm sometimes, I just get into a place and I just, I please, please forgive me. And I'm just saying, when you humble yourself before God and you humble yourself before those around you, the Word of God says there is grace. There is grace in a person's life when they are humble before those around them. God is opposed to the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Next, dads, hear this. Number seven, if you're keeping count, look into the future as you enjoy today. Look into the future as you enjoy today. And again, ask yourself, where do you want your family to be relationally? Where do you want your family to be financially? Where do you want them to be spiritually three years, five years, ten years from now? In other words, don't focus on all the problems of the past. Don't focus on every time you messed up or every time she messed up or every time your kids messed up. Don't focus on the past, but ask yourself, where do I want to be? Where can we be tomorrow or three years from now? Relationally, financially, spiritually. What do you want to do? Where do you want to be spiritually a month from now, three months from now, at the end of this year? Where are you in God today, and where do you want to be with your heavenly Father? See, the reality is that's on you. You get to ask that question, God, here's where I want to be with you. This is what I'd like to be. This is what I'd like to share. This is what I'd like to know. This is where I want to be in my walk with you. Three years from now, three months from now, three weeks from now, relationally. Spiritually, financially. What kind of attachments, dads, do you want with your spouse? You see, the Word of God makes it clear that we were not created to be alone. And there's something inside of us that wants and needs that attachment with our spouse. We want and need to have that attachment with our children. So here's a question. If you get nothing else out of this message, here's a question we all need to ask. What am I doing? in my relationship with my spouse, to bring us closer together? Or what am I doing to push us further apart? Very fair question. What are you doing, men, dads, husbands, that's drawing your spouse closer to you? Or what are you doing that's pushing her further from you? Do you understand that whatever that is, that is your call, that is your choice? You can change that. What are you doing to bring her closer to you? What are you doing to push her further away? Same is true with your kids. What are you doing to bring your kids closer to you? What are you saying? What are you doing? Or what are you saying you're doing that's pushing them further and further away? That's just relationship 101, isn't it? And we've all heard this all of our life, that every decision we make, every circumstance we're in, Everything we say or do is either drawing people closer to us or pushing them further from us. Number eight, as dads, we're called to bless our children, to tell them how much we love them. 
how pleased, how proud you are of them. As you focus on their positives, dads, again, your son and daughter, they need to hear how much you love them. One of the saddest things that breaks my heart is when I hear a son or daughter, especially an adult son or daughter, say this to me, it goes something like this. Well, you know, I know, I know my dad, you know, I, I, know, I know he loved me. He just never said it. But I wish he would have. I wish a son or a daughter will say to me, I wish he would have just said once how proud he was of me. Because I did so much to make him proud, but he never would. And I, and I just missed that. I've heard so many sons and daughters say that to me. And that will break your heart, Dad. When your son or daughter looks back over their life, their relationship with you, and they cannot even remember one time when they heard their dad say, I love you. Well, that's not how I was raised. Well, you know what? Get over it, Dad. Understand you have the choice to say those words. It's, it's, it's there. It's there. And it's not about you, Dad. It's about them. They need to, it's about her. Husbands, love your wives the way Jesus loves the church and was willing to do anything and everything, willing to die the most cruel death to demonstrate that God so loved the world. Dads focus on their positives. Dads rejoice in their accomplishments. Dads let go of the critique and all the negatives. Look, another thing that just breaks my heart is when I hear a son or daughter say to me, and it goes something like this, you know, I came home with a, with a B plus in quantum physics, and my dad said, oh, yeah, why didn't you get an A? He can't even spell quantum physics. <laughs> Don't be that dad. Yeah, dad, I got a promotion. I'm now the vice president. Well, why aren't you the president? Well, Dad, I'm vice president. Why don't you? Dad, you know, our team, you know, went undefeated. Well, did you win the championship? Well, no, we lost. Dads, here's the point. Let go of the critique. Let go of the negatives. Dads, your wife, your sons, your daughter, they're going to have enough negatives and critique in their life without you piling on that. There's enough critique out there. There's enough critique out there. Don't ask me how I know this. <laughs> There's enough critique out there without you piling on. Dad, speak their love language. You know, dads, for kids that are small, maybe at the age of 12, they spell their love language, they spell the word love, T-I-M-E. Small children spell love, T-I-M-E. For older children, maybe it's words of affirmation. Or maybe it's just doing things with them. Maybe it's, as I said earlier, getting in their world. Maybe it's just giving them that attention they crave and long for. And number 10, Dad, create a place called home. A place where there's love and acceptance. A place where there's attachment and connection. Again, Dad, a place where there's stability and safety and structure. A place that is their space. See, home is a place where happy moments are really made. And dads, last of all, ask yourself this question. Dads, where are you in your faith? You see, dads, what you believe really does impact your family. What you believe, dads, or what you don't believe really does impact your children. You see, dads, what you believe determines the choices you make. You see, dad, what you share about your beliefs also will be etched in the mind of your children forever. This past weekend, a very dear man in this community passed away. And what I know about this dear man is this, is he loved the Lord and he served the Lord and he served this community and his daughters know one thing, that their dad made this world a better place. Dads, let me ask you something. Would you like that to be said about you one day? Would you like, dads, for somebody to say about you that my dad, my dad made this world a better place because of his faith, because of his service, because of his love for us. Dads, here's the thing. 
That can be said of all of you. It's your call. You choose to do that. You can make the change. You can hit the pause button. You can say that after today, I'm going to make things new. Because what's, what's going to happen is this. As you serve the Lord, as you grow in his grace, as you love your children, as you love your spouse, it's going to create lasting love and life and stability and structure and memories in the lives of your children forever. See, the point is, how you serve the Lord today will, again, bless others tomorrow. And not only that, but you get blessing today and you get reward for all of eternity. Dads, how you demonstrate love today, hear this, for the things of God will impact your children. What we do today, dads, and here's the point, will determine the success or failure of our families. What you do today, dads, will determine the success or failure of our nation. I don't know about you, but in the last month, I have watched things unfold in our cities over the last several nights. As I'm watching this, I'm thinking, is this how they were raised? Those who are doing some of the things that are so hurtful and harmful and heartbreaking. Was there a dad that demonstrated respect and love and respect for authority and honesty and hard work? Or are we a nation that is so angry? Are we a nation that has lost our first love? Are we a nation that is unraveling before our eyes? You see, dads, here's my point. The world is watching, and God is watching. And your children are watching what we say and what we do. Because who we are as men and who we are as dads and who we are as parents is impacting our family. It's impacting our children. It's impacting our nation forever. And that will never change. Being a dad, parenting, and the impact we have on our children never changes. The book of Proverbs puts it this way, and we'll close. Coach your children in the way they should go. And when they're older, they will not depart from it. Coach them in the way they should go. And when they're older, they will not depart from it. Dads, what you say and do impacts your family, your children, and your nation forever. And that will never change. May we pray. And Heavenly Father, we pray you'll bless us today and speak into our lives and bless the men, the dads especially of this church, those who are watching in such a way, oh God, that their children, their spouse will love them, respect them, and encourage them, and be better because of them. As we follow you, we pray this in Jesus' name.